Well, good evening and welcome to World Changers Bible Study. I'm Pastor Lennox Boyce and I am excited to welcome you to another time of sharing in the Word of God. It's our time to sit around the feet of Jesus to be able to open his Word and to be able to look at his Word together. World Changers Bible Study is brought to you, brought to you compliments of the Churches of God in the Garden in St. James and the Silver Sands in Christ Church. And we are always um, delighted to welcome you on Wednesday evenings as we study God's word together. What's really good about World Changers Bible Study mm -hmm. is that you can feel free to go back and to look at what we've done later. So if you have a friend that you would like to see one of our sessions, you can tell the friend, you know what, you can go on YouTube and you can just check out um, this Bible study. I believe it will bless you. And we've had many persons who have written to us and who have called to say that these studies have been a blessing to them. So welcome to our study this evening. Please subscribe to our channel, like our page, and let us know how um, these sessions of study together have been a blessing to you. We have been into a series called Breaking Strongholds, and um, we are at the tail end of this series. We, have, we only have three sessions to go in this series, and then we are into a brand new series. So we talked last week about the power of the Word of God in Breaking Strongholds. Today, we want to talk about the power of prayer in breaking strongholds. So, so we just want to do a little bit of recapping just before we jump into what we're going to be doing specifically this evening. And we've been using as our key text, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5, which reads, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. This verse has guided us through our sessions. We looked at um, what strongholds are. We identified a number of things that can become strongholds in our lives. And in each session, even in brief, we were able to look at some strategies that we can use to be able to overcome these strongholds. And so we said, in essence, um, a stronghold is really a point of operation from where Satan can keep an unbeliever captive or keep a believer incapacitated. And we said that both believers and non-believers have strongholds that affect them or things that affect them in their lives that can become strongholds if they are allowed to. And so God does not want us to live in bondage, but he wants us to live in freedom. And so he gives us strategies. He gives us tools that we can use to overcome anything that tries to become a stronghold in our lives. And that's why our text says that the weapons of our warfare are mighty in God. Mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. We are not going to be able in ourselves to overcome things that have become strongholds in our lives. Um, the best self-help manuals may not give us what we need, but we know that God has given us weapons. Last week, we said that the word of God is a powerful, mighty weapon in breaking strongholds. Today, we want to emphasize the fact that prayer is also a powerful, mighty weapon in breaking strongholds. So, so we identified during the course of our study the fact that things like fear and discouragement and unforgiveness and worry are things that can become strongholds in our lives. We said things like low self-esteem and occult practices and addictions, bad habits, demonic oppression are things that can become strongholds in our lives. We also identify that, identified the fact that even things like laziness can become a stronghold where, where you can't seem to shake yourself of it. You, 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 you seem not to be able to 
just get up and go and do the things you're supposed to do. There's always something that's holding you back and making you feel as though you would procrastinate, which is the next one. Um, things like anger, things like pride are things that can become strongholds in our lives. These are things that can hold the unbeliever captive or can incapacitate the believer. We are saying that all of these things are things that can become strongholds in our lives. The Bible does teach though that Christ came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He came that we may live life to the full, that we may be free, we may be liberated, um, and we may excel in life. The thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He comes to limit. He comes to um, kill your dreams and your hopes. Uh, he comes to, to kill your hope and, and tries to make you live in hopelessness. He comes to steal your joy and your peace uh, by causing you to live in fear. And he comes to destroy your life by causing you to have low self-esteem and to think that you're nothing. And we said that all of these are things that the enemy does. He is the person who is very often um, responsible for having these strongholds established in our lives. We play a part because we buy into what he is seeing to us or what he's um, trying to do when he tampers with our minds. But, but Christ came that we might have life and that we might have that life more abundantly. Um, there is a verse that also says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus speaking in the synagogue, Luke 4, 18, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Highlighting the fact that we are not created to be in chains to be in bondage, but we were created to be liberated, to be free, to be able to achieve and to excel in, in all the things that God has created us for. And, and a verse that I particularly like is 1 John 3, 8, which says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Very important verse. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And we are saying that um, strongholds are the works of the devil. But Christ came that he might destroy those works. And so um, not only did he come not only was he manifested that he might destroy those works, but what he has also done is that he has given us tools that we might destroy these um, works of the devil as well through his power. So it's important for us to understand that when we are talking about these weapons of our warfare that are not carnal, they're not of us, they're not of this world, uh, but they are mighty in God. They're mighty in God. They are godly weapons and that's why they are able to destroy the works of the devil so we said the word of god is a mighty weapon the word of god and today we are talking about the power of prayer and breaking strongholds the power of prayer in breaking strongholds one of the things that we need to appreciate one of the things that we need to take hold of one of the things that we need to respect is that prayer is powerful it's a powerful tool. It's a powerful weapon. And because we are in warfare, when you are in warfare, there are a few things that you need to remember. You need to remember whenever you are in warfare that you have an enemy. Remember, whenever you're doing warfare, the weapons of our warfare, we fight with weapons and we fight the enemy. So the enemy of our souls will try to combat these um mighty weapons that we have and he tries to do that with prayer and i want to highlight a few of the things that the enemy tries to do as it relates to prayer um these are satanic strategies that affect our prayer lives you see if the enemy can get us to stop praying if he can um somehow be able to quench our desire to prayer to pray rather it means that what he will be doing is that he will be giving himself an advantage over us. So prayer is important for the believer. 
and reminded of the disciples who saw Jesus praying and recognized that there was something that was powerful um, about the fact that he was praying on his earthly sojourn. And they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And, and I believe that that should be the cry of every believer. Lord, teach me to pray. Um, we should want to pray. Um, and so we want to look at some of these satanic strategies. And I want to say that one of the things that the enemy does is he tries to make prayer seem unimportant. He tries to make it seem as though this prayer thing is not as important as you think it is. And we are saying, no, prayer is important. Jesus himself prayed. Jesus taught his disciples to prayer, to pray. Um, we need to recognize that prayer is important. It's the way we communicate with God. It's our way of laying our needs and concerns at his feet. It's our way of getting answers from heaven. Prayer is important. So the enemy will tell you, oh man, you know, you you." you you pray too much or he will send people who will make it seem as though you're praying too much and you're making too much of a big deal of this prayer thing. There, there are persons who sometimes tune out at the time of prayer. I'm saying pray, prayer must be seen as important in our lives. I also want to say that the enemy tries to make prayer seem unattractive. They'll tell you that the the, the, the poorest attended services worldwide are prayer services. The services that nobody wants to attend are prayer services. Um, so, so the enemy tries to make prayer seem unattractive. I want to say to us that we, we should not be sensuous Christians who see importance only in those things that appeal to our senses that make us feel good, that we enjoy doing, um, that that we, we, we enjoy hearing, you know, so concerts and, um, you know, exciting times of praise and worship. We are attracted to those things. But somehow when it comes to prayer, we are not as attracted to prayer. And I'm saying that's a satanic strategy because he uses whatever he can to try to quench our prayer lives. Um, he also makes prayer seem unnecessary, you know, makes us think that we are maybe doing it too much and that there are some things that we really don't need to pray about at all. You know, um, we have to realize that prayer is necessary. It's necessary. There are things that we ought to pray about. In fact, James says, Pray without ceasing. Don't give up on prayer. It's, it's necessary. It's always going to be necessary. It is something that we need to see as the thing to do. And when we are in a spiritual battle, we're going to realize that prayer is very important. Because when we pray, we are talking to God. It's our way of communicating to him. And not only does he give us guidance and direction like we talked about last week through his word, but he also gives us guidance and direction when we talk to him. Prayer is necessary because when we pray, we are building a relationship with Almighty God. We're becoming friends with him. We are becoming sensitive to his voice, we, we, we get to know how he speaks to us and we become sensitive to him. So prayer is necessary. The enemy also tries to make it seem as though prayer is unprofitable. You know, that you're going to do all this praying and nothing is going to happen. I want to say that's not true. We need to understand that the, the prayer of the righteous man is powerful. Prayer is profitable. Um, you will benefit from praying. You will benefit from praying. And just like you're going to benefit from reading the word of God, you're going to benefit from praying as well. And then he tries to make prayer seem unnatural. You know, as though it's not the natural thing to do. The natural thing for the child of God to do is, is prayer. Prayer becomes something that is important to us. We ought to be people who pray every day. 
under every circumstance. It ought to be our natural response to the things that are going on around us. So these are some of the satanic strategies the enemy uses to try to get in the way of our prayer lives. Um, why does he do it? Because he understands the power of access. The fact that we have the right to enter the holy place and call upon the name of the Lord. That's a right that we have, the power of access. And the enemy tries because he knows that when we pray, things happen. He knows that our prayers are powerful. And, and he understands that, yes, as the children of God, we have this access into God's presence. Hebrews 4.14 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is made, who is sorry, who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. And here's what the writer to Hebrews says, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, or let us come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That's a wonderful text right there that highlights the fact that we have access to Almighty God when we pray. He also understands the power of agreement. Um, so, so it's important to understand that just as a unity is important in the natural realm, agreement is important in the spiritual realm. And, and the two are cousins. Um, agreement is when we get together. Um, the Bible says that if any two or three agree, um, I am going to be there in the midst of them. And, and so we, we need to understand that when we pray, there are times where we need a, a partner to pray with us. When, when we get together with our brothers and our sisters in times of corporate prayer, that's powerful. Prayer is powerful, not only individually, but corporately as, as it relates to your Christian community. Those things are important. So he understands the power of agreement. Um, but before, before we go to the third one, alignment, you, you may remember when Peter was cast in prison and, and they, they, they were threatening to kill him. And the Bible says that the church began to pray and an angel appeared, um, smote Peter on the side, led him out of the prison. And, and Peter went to the place where the prayer meeting was being held. And they were astonished that God had answered their prayer. Um, on the day of Pentecost, they were in one accord, in one place. The Holy Spirit descended upon them. There is power in agreement. There's also power in alignment. What do we mean by this? Um, we mean that prayer aligns you with the mind of God. Prayer allows you to be in good standing with God. Prayer allows you to be in good relationship with God because you are talking to him. You are communing with him. You are hearing from him. Um, and, and communication is two-way. You are able to talk to God. God is able to talk to you. When, when you read the word and, and you read something like, and Abraham said to God, and God said to Abraham, it, it comes across as though they had a relationship where they were able to commune and communicate with each other. That's the same kind of relationship God wants to have with all of his children. And so you, you would realize that all the great people of God in every era, in every era, who walked according to the plan of God for their lives were people of prayer. When you read the Bible, you realize that the men, the great men and women of God in, in that era were men and women of prayer. When you look at our era, you would realize that the great men and women of God, the mighty men and women of God, who were able to overcome the obstacles in their lives, who were able to ensure that there weren't strongholds in their lives, but were able to live in freedom and, and to walk according to the plan that God had designed for them without being held back, people of prayer. Why is this? 
Why? Because the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. It has enormous benefits. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful. Why? Not because we have power in ourselves, but prayers are powerful because of who we pray to. Pray is our way of saying, Lord, I can't do it by myself. I need your help. You are my source. I am calling on you. You're the one who will give me what I need, the help that I need. So I'm calling upon you. And so I'm saying that because the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective, it will bring about change. It, it will have significant consequences. We ought to be people of prayer. And so I want to suggest five things, five things tonight that we need to do if we are going to be able to use prayer to break strongholds in or over our lives. Firstly, we need to ask God, and this is when we're praying, ask God to show you any strongholds that are in your life. There are times when strongholds are um, activated in our lives, are claiming territory in our lives, are limiting us, and we don't even know it. So begin by asking God to show you any strongholds that are in your life. There are some that are obvious to you. There may be others that may be operating in subtle ways. Remember we talked about the wells of the devil and the fact that the enemy wants to be your master, but he pretends to be your playmate. And so there may be times when there are strongholds that are being established in your life bit by bit, and you are not even aware because it's hidden from your, your consciousness. And we are saying, first of all, you're going to overcome the stronghold by prayer. Ask God, begin by asking God to show you any stronghold that is in your life. That's number one. Secondly, you need to surrender your mind and your will to God. Now, we said in our very first session that strongholds begin in the mind. What we didn't say is that they begin in the mind and they end in the will. So they begin with your thinking. Um, the, 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 the mind becomes a kind of battlefield where the enemy is throwing thoughts and ideas um, into your mind, you are not good enough. You don't have what it takes. You're not gifted enough. And, and feeding that um, self-consciousness of yours to lower your self-esteem begins in the mind, but then it ends in the will. Um, and we were talking about the will. We are talking about the things that you do willfully, the things that you act out, the things you begin to believe and, and you begin to incorporate into your lifestyle. You do it willingly. Um, that's where the stronghold wants to end, in your will. So we are saying, surrender your mind and surrender your will to God. Lord, take my mind. Lord, take my will. Um, I surrender my will to you because I want your will to be done in my life. So you got to surrender your mind and your will. We don't surrender our wills easily. So, so there are times when we got to pray about it. we got to activate um, God's presence and God's help in surrendering our minds. Lord, I, I want you to take over this mind. I don't want it to be dominated by certain kinds of thoughts and ideas. Take my mind. Take my will. Make it yours. You, if you want to overcome by prayer, um, you, you, you can't just speak words. But, but you gotta, you, you got to do action. So you surrender your mind. You surrender your will to God. Um, so, so you're asking him to show you what the strongholds are. And then you're surrendering your mind and your will to God. Thirdly, you want to then begin to speak to God about the stronghold. Now, when you've surrendered your mind to God, you are saying, Lord, I want my mind to be aligned with yours. When you speak to God about your your will. You're saying, Lord, I surrender my will to you and I want to embrace your will. And then you are saying, Lord, if it is fear, 
you, you speak to God about the stronghold of fear. You ask God to break that stronghold and he is going to do it. Lord, break this stronghold. I recognize that fear has surrounded me and praying today, Father, that you will break this stronghold in my life in the name of Jesus. If it is a stronghold that is trying to become established, you say, Lord, I can see that fear is trying to overtake me, but I uh, pray that you will break this. You will break this stronghold of fear over my life in the name of Jesus. Whatever. If you're saying, Lord, I, I can see that unforgiveness is creeping up on me, that it, it is hard for me to forgive. Lord, I am just surrendering this to you right now. And I pray that you will break this stronghold over my life in the name of Jesus. You've got to speak to God about the stronghold. That's a very important aspect of using prayer to break the stronghold. Number four, you got to start speaking to the stronghold by denouncing it and renouncing it. Now, now the two are different. Denouncing means that you are declaring that it is not good for you. You're denouncing it. You're saying, this fear is not for me. You've not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. This is not for me. And uh, this is not good. I renounce in it means that you are disassociating yourself with the particular stronghold. You, you, you're, you're declaring that it will no longer be a part of your life. You, you are separating yourself from it. So you denounce it. You're declaring it to be wrong. You're, you're, you're declaring it not to be not of God. Um, and you're renouncing it by distancing yourself from it, disassociating yourself with it. That's important. And you do that in prayer. You, you speak to the stronghold. Um, fear, I denounce you. You are not of God. And, and I declare that you will no longer be part of my life. You've got to start speaking those things into existence. And you do that by committing them to Almighty God. And then five, and this is very, very important because, you know, there are times when we like things like, you know, we hear that there is this um, evangelist, this um, dynamic man of God that is coming from somewhere um, and, and we, we go and, and we get the person to lay their hands on our heads and to rebuke the spirit of fear and to all these things. Um, and then we go back. And we realize we are still fearful and we are wondering, why am I still fearful? Well, um, the thing is that when the person prayed, it may have been broken. But unless you take responsibility, you're going to realize that we fall back into some of the same traps that we were in before. So we have to make continual prayer a priority in our lives. We have to decide that we are going to be the people who are going to pray continually. I, I quoted this verse earlier. Um, James 5, 16, which says, pray without ceasing, which means that we are not praying 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but we are not giving up on prayer. We are making prayer a priority in our lives. That's what, it's, that's what it's talking about. Ensuring that we continue to pray. Um, every day we pray. We, we have a prayer list. We, we, we ensure that we um, commit everything in our lives, those things that are bothering us before the throne of Almighty God. We, we continue to understand that this is a mighty weapon that God has given to us and we don't give up on it. We combat the, the satanic strategies that try to make us think that is unimportant, um, that is unattractive, that is unnecessary. And we get in there with God and we pray without ceasing. When we want to have victory in life, you have to be people of continual prayer. It has to become a priority in our lives. When we do that, 
we will have victory over strongholds because when we pray, we are activating the heavenly into the realm of the earthly. The things that are affecting us on earth then have to cope with the power of heaven when God's people begin to pray. So we must be people of prayer, whatever it is. If it's a physical condition that you realize is becoming a stronghold in your life and you are living your life through that physical condition, commit it to God. Start praying about it and believe God to give you the breakthrough and the liberty that you need in the name of Jesus. First John 5.14 says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything, According to his will, he hears us. So when we pray, we're not praying in a vacuum. We are not praying and having our um, prayers hit the ceiling and return to us. When we pray, God hears us. God hears us. And God wants all his children to walk in liberty and walk in freedom that includes you. He created you to walk in freedom and in liberty. So we have the confidence that when we ask anything, he hears us. So prayer then is one of the strong weapons of our spiritual warfare. And I want to challenge you tonight. I want to challenge you tonight as we wrap up to make prayer a priority for you. Um, I want you to talk to God about those things that want to become strongholds in your life. I want you to bind them in the name of Jesus and believe that God will give you the victory over every stronghold that tries to establish itself in your life. I want to leave a thought with you that says, if life gets too hard to stand, kneel. Remember in Ephesians 6, um, Paul talks about when you've done all to stand. And there are times when you do everything that you can to stand. And then he talks about the armor. And he ends by saying, praying always with all prayer and supplication. So it's saying when, when, when it's hard to stand, kneel. Because when you kneel before God, you can stand before anything. He who kneels before God can stand before anything, any stronghold in your life. You can stand before because there is no stronghold that is so powerful that it can withstand the omnipotent God that we serve. And that's the power that we call upon when we talk to Almighty God. Amen. 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 So glad that you could join us this evening for World Changers Bible Study. We have two more sessions to go as we wrap up this series on breaking strongholds. I want to encourage you to be with us again next week as we um, bring um, our penultimate session to you. And then the following week, we're going to have our last session in this series, and we're going to be heading into a brand new series. Thank you for being here this evening. Please go back um, if you haven't and check the other sessions we've done in this series. Um, and I look forward to seeing you again. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Um, and Lennox's voice saying good night and may God bless you. Thank you.